Hello friends. I wanted to uh, show you about Inkscape. Inkscape is an open source illustration application and what it does is it allows you to use vector graphics as opposed to bitmap graphics like Photoshop to be able to do graphic design. And I want to be able to show you that with free software you can make great design. And I'm just going to go ahead and make something here uh, using text on probably a colored background. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this uh, document properties setting. And I'm going to change it to US letter just because it's a convenient size. I'm going to change it to landscape orientation. And I'm also going to go down to where it says background color and I'm going to make it opaque. That's using this alpha channel right here. I'm going to close that. I'm going to close this. Settings are there automatically. Uh, I tend to use a lot of keyboard shortcuts in order to get to different places in Inkscape and I'm going to try to verbally indicate when I'm doing that. I'm going to hit 5 on my keyboard in my number row and that's going to bring the edges of the page to full view. And then what I want to do now is I want to add some text. So I'm going to go to this text tool and I'm going to lay down uh, four words. Let's see. Five words. Uh, how about love is all you need? We're going to illustrate the famous lyric from the Beatles, love is all you need. So I'm going to do it one word at a time by clicking subsequently. And then I'm going to go to the pointer tool, the selection tool. And I'm going to uh, size these words up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do all of them. So using the pointer tool, I'm dragging a rubber band selection around all of the words just by clicking and dragging like that. And with Inkscape, you have to select the entire item that you want to select. In other words, if I just use the rubber band tool and select half of a word, it's not going to select anything. But if I select the entire word, it will select all of that word, two words, and then the whole thing. Also, if I was to simply drag this out, you see how it stretches? That's not good. I'm going to control Z to get back to where I was. And if I take the corner and I move it, it's also going to stretch. I'm going to control Z to get out of that. What I'm going to do in order to avoid that is I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and then drag. And what that does is it keeps everything proportionally aligned. I'm going to just select this word and move it as I did with the selection tool. I'm going to hold down control, resize it up. I'm going to move is over here. And I'm going to size it up. Move all over here and size it up. Move you over here and size it up. Move it down to the baseline. And I'm going to grab need. And again, holding down control, size it up. Now, I could go on the visual cues. In other words, I could just use my eye in order to see if this is all lined up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a line that's not actually going to be output when I save this piece to a PNG, to a bitmap. I'm going to click in the ruler and drag this line out, like so. I'm going to click in the ruler again, drag out another line to the end of love. And see now, I have the ability, if I rubber band select all of this, to move it over. And then I'm going to hold down control and size it down. 
and I'm going to use the arrows on my keyboard in order to move it up closer to love. And same thing with need. I'm actually going to leave the period out of it. If you hold down control and hit the side uh, sizing handle, it still proportionally moves everything down. I'm going to leave the period out of the proportion of the design. I'm also going to drag a guide down from the top because I want to make sure that all of these items are aligned as well. You see I'm zooming in is used uh, using the magnifying tool. You can use the magnifying tool in order to zoom in. I'm going to click on the magnifying tool. I'm going to do another rubber band selection. And you can see that the bottom of this U is not on the baseline. I'm going to go back to my selection tool, select it. I'm going to use my arrows in order to get it back up. Now, in order to get back out, in order to get back out to the full size view, I'm going to hit 5 on my keyboard. And now everything is aligned. So, what to do now? Well, I don't really care for this font. It's an Arial uh, style font, a sans serif. I'm going to click on this T up here, and it gives me this convenient selector in order to see what my selection would look like in different fonts. So for example, uh, band shrift I might use, or bell MT. I'm looking for something that speaks to me in terms of the message. That might be nice. Callisto MT. I'm going to click on apply. I'm going to close. You can see that all of my proportions have changed. And so I'm going to realign everything using control to constrict my proportions. I'm going to select this group of words and size them down considerably. I'm going to click on is and bring it over. Click on all and bring it over. And click on you and bring it down. I'm going to select all of them. Control and upsize. I'm going to let the U escape just a little bit. I'm going to use my arrows in order to move them back into place. I'm going to take need, holding down control, holding down control in order to constrict proportions. I'm going to bring that back up using arrows on my keyboard. And now I really sort of want to bring things into place in relationship to one another make them feel right and that's really up to you as a designer that's a set of choices that you will make now I'm going to use my rectangle tool I'm going to make a rectangle about the size of my page you can see that I can see the text through the you can see that I can see the text through this rectangle that I just created. I created it the same way that I would create a rubber band selection. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that that's selected. And then you see these icons up here. These four icons allow you to change the position of whatever you have selected in relationship to the others. So for example, if I want to send that pink rectangle to the bottom, I just click on lower selection to bottom. And I'm going to select all of the text. And I'm going to go down to my color bar and select white. 
And I want to put an outline on all of this text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to click on a dark red with those items selected. And you see that it created an outline on all those items. Down here is the size of that line. And when I decrease the size of that line, you can see that it decreased the size of the line on my text. <clears throat> now, I like the position of all this text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group it. If you go to the object menu and choose group, what that means is now when I select any of those items, they all get selected, which is convenient. And I'm going to realign my lines because it feels like this is closer to center on the page. We'll find out exactly where center is later. Now, with all of those items selected as a group, I can then duplicate by choosing Edit and then Duplicate, and that's going to give me two of those pieces of text. I'm going to make that second piece gray, and I'm also going to hold down Shift and hit the X in my colors, and now that lost that red outline which is good. I'm going to move it in position as though it was a shadow and I'm going to use a different selection positioning tool called lower selection one step. And you see now that goes just underneath the other pieces of text and I'm using my arrows now to position them so that they're almost like a shadow and the further I move that shadow piece away, the more prominent the shadow becomes. So, what's one other thing that I can do in order to create more of a shadow effect is to go to my path and stroke dialog. That's by clicking this up here. I'm sorry, fill and stroke dialog. And there is a blur setting right here. I'm going to increase that with that shadow selected. And I'm going to decrease my opacity by clicking to about 80%, maybe a little bit more, more like 60. And the final result is that I have a real shadow effect that exactly matches my piece of text. So this was a brief introduction into Inkscape to show you how to make a very simple uh, text-based illustration. There are many things that we could do with this in order to make it more substantial. For example, I can now select both of those grouped objects and I'm going to hold down Control and Shift. Control and Shift as you resize actually sizes everything at once and that allows me to fill out the proportion on that. And to be honest, I'm not really crazy about the uh, white with the red outlines. What I think I'm going to do is make a different red. And by playing a little bit, you can see what works for you. I think it may be something like that. So, thank you very much for paying attention. I really love Inkscape as a design tool, and I think it's incredibly useful, especially because it's free, and it does not have any restrictions to entry like some other more popular design applications like Illustrator or uh, even CorelDRAW, which Inkscape was really based on. So, hopefully this has been helpful for you. I hope to see you again soon. Thanks a lot.